One of my uh, Christmas gifts this year was this book, Quaternions and Octonions, John Conway and Derek Smith. I wanted to start trying to code up some of the math from this book in Minecraft. So <laughs> I have here a funny little playground. Uh, these are armor stands, so they're they're wearing blocks on their heads. And I've set up almost a kind of physics engine with command blocks. I'm not really sure what to call it, but it lets us move armor stands around in near perfect circles. So I have a few different settings on the machine here. Uh, this is doing all the computation. Actually, this row of command blocks right here does all the computation for movement. The rest of it is what just carries out the movement. But what I can do is I can reverse the direction of the circles. I can make the circles grow larger. We can stabilize them again. Uh, we can make them decay, get smaller again. This is one of my favorite ones to watch. Yeah, and they slowly tighten up bit by bit. And then we can just delete everything too. Uh, I also created here, so let's put it on stable circle size. Actually, let's put it on, this is fast growth. And then this thing here will also make some armor stands with blocks on their heads. Yeah, and then we can get a spiral. Let's stabilize it. There we go. <laughs> and then one of the other things we can do is while we have these kind of blocks moving around, we can actually change where their center of rotation is. So here, I'm going to set every one of these to have its center of rotation kind of like moved relative to where it is. And now the whole spiral keeps its shape, but now each block is circling a different point. Super funky stuff. And then we can also uh, like contract this slowly. So make those circles smaller, stabilize it, make the individual circles grow bigger here. Yeah, and then here, this will be a good demonstration. When these weird circle things get too big, yeah, it starts doing really funky stuff like that. So we'll put on the fastest growth. And I'll start throwing in some of the other colored circles here. And then these are going to get real chaotic. So you can see it's not even a circle anymore. <laughs> and then what's really cool is when you put on exponential growth like this, yeah, these little like attraction points form that all the points collide on. And if we put it on no growth or shrinking, yeah, I just get real weird behavior. And then we can put it on contraction again. <laughs> this is so weird. Uh, and if we wait, I don't know, maybe a minute, 30 seconds. Yeah, there we go. You can see each set of armor stands, its movement is back to a circle again. Although now they don't, they don't have common centers anymore. All right, so what's going on here? Here's all the different objectives we're using here. In addition to each one of these armor stands having coordinates in the like physical world of Minecraft, they have scoreboard coordinates as well. One of the things that's a relatively basic fact about complex numbers is that they they actually do a really good job representing rotations in two-dimensional space or just kind of spinning around a central point. So every game tick, each one of these armor stands has its scoreboard coordinates multiplied by a complex number. Well, and that'll spin them in a circle. And then we can actually control whether they grow or shrink based on whether that complex number we're multiplying everything by is bigger than one or less than one. So all I'm doing here with these command blocks is setting u, x, and u, z. So u is the uh, complex number that we're multiplying all these guys' coordinates by. So we got 1019 for the x coordinate here and 100 for the z coordinate. And that's stable circling. So it doesn't grow bigger or shrink smaller. You might think, whoa, a complex number that's like 1,000 units out and 100 up would be way longer than one. That's because in the scoreboard computations here, scoreboard coordinates are scaled by 1024. So here's all the different coordinates of the armor stands. And with everything scaled by 1024, this is about a unit distance complex number. And then we can make it a little bigger than unit distance by just bumping up its x-coordinate or a little smaller by bumping its x-coordinate down. 
we can also uh, reverse direction by changing one of the coordinates of our like rotator complex number to be negative. All the computation for that like rotation with complex numbers is taking place in this row of command blocks. So each one of these is just uh, an execute command that makes each armor stand actually compute its own change in position uh, per tick. So in addition to their position, we're also computing where they should be at the end of this tick. So x position is their current position, x new is what their new position should be, and then x delta is the difference between those two values. And this is computing x new, the new position, this is computing x delta, and all these just carry out teleporting the armor stand slightly based on what their x delta value is. The reason they stop moving in circles and do this like super random behavior is because scoreboard values only go up from uh, about two, negative 2 to the 31 to positive 2 to the 31. Because their scoreboard values are all scaled by 2 to the 10, what that means is that during the computation here, sometimes you get an overflow error, where if any of their positions are bigger than, I don't know, about 50 or so, multiplying that position by some other similarly large number creates something bigger than 2 to the 31. So if you have two numbers scaled by the same factor and you multiply them together, their product is now scaled not by that same factor, but by the square of that factor. So I also have a scoreboard value scale, and at the end of any multiplication, I have to divide that number by the scale to bring it back down to the right kind of magnitude as all the other numbers. Those overflow errors are what create this uh, crazy jittery behavior. The machine is also set up so that it'll run if you just you know place down armor stands manually. So here I just have some uh, command blocks that set the like scoreboard coordinates of these armor stands to be one zero and scaled up that's a thousand and twenty four for the x position and zero for the z position now if we start up the engine <laughs> it just kind of swivels them around that's going to be it for this video but this is hopefully going to be just the start obviously this book also covers quaternions and those can be used to model three-dimensional rotations but until then my name's chris Thanks for watching.